Hey everyone, I'd like to wish all my subscribers a Merry Christmas and upcoming Happy New Year. Of course, by the time this posts, it'll be before New Year's, but after Christmas. In any case, I uh, wish you guys the best and hope you enjoy your holiday break. I'm going to be showing you in this video how I went from a group of boxes of assorted parts up to the assembly that you see in front of you for the LT2 manifold installation on LT1 Camaro and Corvette motors. It's a pretty straightforward process if you have basic tools available to you and a little bit of experience with things like Dremels, angle grinders, etc. Some of that is necessary just to remove some of the plastics. Other than that, most of the procedure is pretty bolt on, so stay tuned and I'll show you guys how I did that. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do with the intake manifold is I'm gonna bolt on the adapter from ICT Billet. That way I can go ahead and mark the little lip that I have to wear down on the intake manifold in order to match to the adapter. Now, you're gonna need a five millimeter Allen key in order to turn down the bolts for that. I've got a socket adapter. Let's just go ahead and get that installed. Now, you can use the gasket that comes with this flat gasket, or you can use the rubber gasket that's meant for this space. Uh, it depends how much you pour, obviously. You might have to use this. But for now, I'm just gonna pop this on. So the rubber O-ring goes to the outside. Um, I don't really know that there's no orientation to the rest of it. You want the counter sinks for the Allen bolts, so that's how you know it faces this way. Before tightening this down too much, you want to kind of center it. And actually, if I can, I'm going to try to shift it down because there's not much meat to remove up here, um, where there's a nice big ridge here that you can remove, so there's a lot more material. So I can probably thin the snout a lot less if I kind of bias this a little bit down. Not by much, but as a matter of fact, I might just center it because the little bit that it's buying me is not really that significant. interesting thing about this adapter is one of the bolts won't sit if you tighten the others too much first. Let's loosen them. There we go. So you'll notice there's this little lip here on the inside of plastic and that's what I want to port down to match this adapter because this adapter actually matches up to the throttle body pretty nice so it'll be a smooth transition or smooth enough transition 
throttle body to here, but then from here into this, it's kind of rough. So I'm going to go ahead and take some nail polish and paint the inside of this so that then I know exactly where I want to reduce this once I remove this adapter. Alright, so here is uh, here's some nail polish, which I may or may not have stolen from my significant other. Marking pretty good. Paint marker would do this much better if you have one. Good spray paint as well, but you'll get over spray inside your map hole. Probably not ideal. Coat of sanding would have probably made that uh, match a little better. I might have to do that if I take this apart and see that it's not uh, staying where I want it to. Let's clean this all off with acetone afterwards. Man, that's not strong. You look at a nail salon and you could wear a freaking respirator. That's uh, interesting. Looks like the entire red lip is painted. The entire inner lip. So I'm basically just going to be axing that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Thought there'd be a little more to that, but oh well. Looks like that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to just be removing this entire inner lip. Maybe using that other uh, gasket I mentioned. Fantastic nail polish on my fingers. So one thing that's different about these manifolds versus the LT1s is actually that breather there on the front. If you try to connect your hose here, you'd have this crazy arch. So in order to reduce that, we put an angle fitting. And I'll put the link in the description, but got these guys on Amazon. They're made by Dorman. They're 10 to 8 millimeter nylon 90 degree connectors. Pop these open. You might be able to get this at your local auto parts. They're called fuel line connectors, but they've got the right sort of clip to grab onto something like this. So do that. Now you have a nice little 90 here. You can just pop a hose onto that. You don't have to have an arch. Then you have to install fitting on the back of this thing. So we're going to drill a hole and we're going to tap it for a quarter inch MPT. Then we're going to install fitting back here. I think I will kind of dab some epoxy, some plastic epoxy on the threads and that will guarantee that that fitting is going to stay sealed in there pretty tight um, so that's definitely something i'm going to do otherwise i could just theoretically use teflon right that's what you normally use on an mpt fitting but we'll see how i feel once that's ready 
so right now I'm just gonna go ahead and install the fitting that's gonna go back here now you want it to end up pointing towards the driver side because it connects to the brake booster as far as I understand so I'm gonna go ahead and just mark a point here with a permanent marker I might mark a point there and drill and then just leave an extra port in case I ever needed it for something but we'll see I noticed that everyone drills theirs around here so let's go ahead and do that first out to uh, 7 16 for our quarter inch MPT but first work my way up with a step bit Right now we're going to tap this and go nice and slow. as much as possible to keep these chips out of here although I'm going to also take the pressed air and blast this out just to make sure it's nice and clean afterward I want my engine breathing in plastic chips
So I'm going to take my fitting, apply some uh, joint compound. This is for MPD pipe, right? It's got Teflon in it. Let's uh, drop some inside this bag just to clean off. All right, and get the good stuff. We want to put it more toward the top of the threads and you don't want to exaggerate the amount. All right. Just a little bit goes a long way. You don't want to put it on the first few threads because you don't want it in the intake manifold. All right, you'll notice I've worn gloves specifically so I can spread this stuff, not get it all over my fingers. That should be plenty. Let's wipe this little bit off. Okay, put that down. Now with a clean hand, let's go ahead and thread that on. Oops. Let's go ahead and thread that on. MPT. Whenever you start an MPT thread, you can actually turn counterclockwise and then clockwise in order to engage it. And I have a feeling I'm gonna have to sink the tap a little bit deeper in this piece of junk to get it threaded correctly. So the fitting is not really engaging as it should every time i do that it just comes off feels like it's starting a thread but then it like there it goes nah that's in cockeyed yeah we gotta thread that some more got this crap on my hands oh well let's sink this uh in a little deeper I wish I got a bottoming tap, I wouldn't have to bring it in so much. Then again, what am I saying? This is an MPT thread, it's a tapered thread. Alright, get those chips out. Thread this bastard in now. Yeah, that's instantly much better, but I don't know that it's perfect yet. 
Yeah, there it goes. So that's a little looser than I want it to be. That's actually a very loose fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna clean this up and then just epoxy this back here so that it's fixed in place because I don't want this loose like that. That's not gonna seal. I guess I tapped it in too much. That's not a big deal either. I'll just clean it up and epoxy it. So let's just get it out a little more. It's hitting this thing. I'll probably ax this anyway because I don't need these fins and I gotta ax some fittings. So Gotta ax some fins on the bottom anyway. All right, so I'm gonna probably end up removing the fitting and shaving down some of these fins just so they're not in the way. And then I'm also gonna shave off the fins on the bottom so that I can make this thing fit. So that means I should probably tape off some of these ports just so not filling them up with shavings. There is a casting nub here on the side. This is the passenger side of the engine bay. You have to get rid of so that this can sit down correctly. So make sure I get rid of that. But first let's tape all this stuff off. And then I'll also do the, the snout.
at this point I just took the cutoff wheel and worked out all the material that was here. Made pretty short work of it. Um, just gotta be patient and just keep going at it and going at it and it comes down, kind of melts a little bit toward the end. That's done. I got rid of the casting nub that was here. So I evened that out to this contour so it shouldn't be in the way when I'm mounting this. I also took a cutting drum on the Dremel and just kind of rounded these out a little bit. I saw that that kind of helps with the foam and fitment around that foam isolator that's for dampening injection noise. Um, not really sure how necessary it is, but went ahead and did it anyway. All that's really left to do is to epoxy the fitting in the back and also to port the snout up front. Now, you don't really need to port the snout. That's really if you're going to 95 millimeter, you will not be able to port it sufficiently for 103 millimeter throttle body, but that's okay. Now, I'm gonna stay at 95 and probably get my 95 ported by solar at some point, but I don't need too much more than that. Um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and try cleaning up this area a little bit and then I'll go and port the snout and do the epoxy for the fitting and I should be done with this and this thing will be ready to install in my car. So I finished all the work that I was doing as far as prepping the bottom of this thing and also cleaning up the snout. Now, I didn't really do anything fancy as you saw. I took a little sanding drum on my Dremel and just kind of beveled this 
to kind of knife edge this inner line of the groove that holds the gasket for this. I'm obviously not going to use a rubber gasket now because this is kind of thin so I wouldn't really trust it uh, for sealing purposes. So I'm going to just use the flat gasket that came with the adapter. But basically I beveled this then I took 120 grit sandpaper and went all around and then followed that up with 320 grit right just to smooth it out and it feels nice and smooth but it does have that whitish kind of rough look if you want it to like have that nice polished shiny plastic look there is a simple way to do that got a bunch of brake fluid in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of soak this a little bit in brake fluid alright just get some on there Alright, got a little tiny bit of brake fluid. Don't need a lot. And I'll just go around this way and wipe all this plastic down. As you can see, it gets nice and shiny and black again. Right? Kind of eats the oxidation off the surface. It leaves you something nice and clean. Brake fluid being corrosive, it also ate some of that uh, red nail polish I put on there earlier. Which is good, because we want to remove that. Alright, so now this is a nice smooth black. And here it's no longer whitish looking. Feels nice. I'm gonna go around another time and dry it a bit, but yeah, it looks good. Make sure you dry up all the brake fluid and then and that's good to go. Again, brake fluid is very corrosive. Make sure you wash your hands after you interact with it as well. You should probably just wear gloves, to be honest. Um, it's not good for you, but uh, yeah, it's one of those things mechanics and people who work on cars tend to do is we end up touching stuff without gloves that we really shouldn't be. Suppose if you did it once or twice, not the end of the world, but if you did it a lot, it's definitely bad for you long term. Alright, let's put the adapter on and uh, we'll glue our fitting in the back and this should be ready to rock. So before I go and epoxy that fitting on, I'm going to put this adapter on for the last time. Again, I don't think it really matters what orientation it goes on, but one thing I do know is this is an area that's subject to a lot of vibration, so I'm going to use some blue Loctite 242 on these bolts just to keep them secure. I know that there's, there's bound to be a torque spec um, for that intersection there, but the reality is that it's probably going to be in inch pounds and I don't really have a good torque wrench for smaller inch pound torques so I'm just going to do this hand tight should be fine um, just try not to overdo it and again with the blue Loctite that should help a lot you want to make sure this is right because once you've bolted this down and you put the throttle body, the throttle body is in the way so in order for you to tighten these later you would have to take the throttle body off so you'd probably you know want to make sure that you have it on right the first time and you don't have to go back and mess with it again. Now these are kind of, I've noticed they fit really tight these bolts so you want to kind of sink in all the bolt heads slightly into the bores, the counter bores, before you thread them all the way down or else you run the risk of one of them being stuck out. So just keep that in mind. All right, you kind of want to Bit by bit. Oh, 
<laughs> I've made a slight mistake here, have I not? Forgot the gasket. So, very quickly, Loctite will dry in the absence of oxygen, right? That's what makes it cure. It has an anaerobic cure. So, as long as you don't wait too long, that should not seal up. I will reapply, however. Alright, so double check you got everything, including your gasket. Don't make the mistake I was just about to make. One thing I'm curious about with this gasket is if it's gonna get in the way. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't. It doesn't. It completely clears. That's good. That's what you want to see. You don't want it to get in the way. So let's try this one more time, shall we? Little blue Loctite here, here, and here. All right. Don't expect that to go anywhere. Gasket is aligned correctly. Get the bolt head into the counter bore. Now let's do the others. It's in the counter bore. That one's in the counter bore. All right, so just tighten these all the way down by hand. Nice, not much of a lip here. I guess I could shift this slightly because there's a bit of a something in the bottom. A little pressure. And there we go, now it's nice and even. That's a pretty smooth transition. Get my wrench. That feels good. Feels good. All right, that's not gonna go anywhere. Nice and smooth. Pretty good transition, can't complain about that. It's all exactly what I want. So now, let's get an eight mil and put our throttle body on. All right, now we're gonna do the throttle body. I'm also gonna do this angled connector. You just plop that down. Then the throttle body the electronic component of it goes toward the driver's side of the engine bay. So this goes on like this, right? And I'm going to go ahead and Loctite my bolts 
just like before. These are an 8mm hex head bolt. So I've got my little wrench with 8mm socket on there. Running low on blue Loctite. Looks like I'm having just enough to get this job done. I'm going to have to get more of that at the store. Oh, there you go. Spit out a lot. A little dab there at the end. Now, similarly to before, I'll get one on, kind of thread it in place. Oops! And similarly to before, I almost forgot. Oh no, I did it! <laughs> this has a built in gasket. What am I saying? Oh man. Got those two threaded in. Now, this one is also easy to get, more or less. Alright, the tricky one is this one because the bolt can dance around in here a lot. Helps if you lift this up. All right, I kind of lifted it up here and looked at the bolt in the gap, and I was able to get it to thread. In order to really get in there, though, I'm gonna need an extension. Yeah, let me look for an extension in an eight mil. All right. Uh, you are compressing a gasket here, so it's going to come down a little uneven at first. Alright, that's nice there. I actually can get at this bolt here without an extension, fortunately, because at the moment I cannot find a small 8mm socket that fits my other wrench. And so sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. Thread in my hand a little bit more. And then we'll get this one. All right, let's check the throttle plate. Opens without obstruction of any kind. One thing I'm not liking, there does seem to be a slight lip, but it's even all around. It's not even bad, can't complain. But yeah, I guess in the future you could port slightly on the metal piece and make an even smoother transition there that would help for more power. It's probably a very small amount, but once I port and polish my throttle body, send this out, I'll take advantage and do this too. Let's go around the back. 
Here out back I've sanded this with 120 grit in preparation for the epoxy I wanted to add. Couldn't find an epoxy. So I did find this Permatex pneumatic hydraulic sealant that I've had for a while. It was for the brake projects. So I'm going to try this out and see how that goes. So let's just shake it before use. Hopefully this will do it. Um, it might not, but we'll see. If it doesn't, I'll go out and buy some epoxy. Then I'll just hard epoxy it in there, but hopefully once this is dry, it'll do the trick. Oh, it's got one of those fancy tips you gotta cut. Fancy schmancy. That's cool, because you control the flow. You can cut it so that it flows per your preferences. Stuff is nice and thick. Okay. That might do the job. I thought it would be more watery. That's, that's pretty thick. I think that's pretty good there. I'll just let that hang out and dry and we'll see what it does. And like I said, push comes to shove. If this doesn't dry nice and solid, I'll come back and epoxy all this outside with something, JB Weld or a plastic epoxy. And I don't expect that'll go anywhere. All right, so at this point, this intake manifold is ready to go down onto an LT1 motor. So just a quick recap, we've added a 90 degree elbow here to allow this to connect at a nice angle to the hose that goes here. We have an LT5 95 millimeter throttle body with an adapter from ICT Billet. You can get this at Summit Racing. I've got the MAP adapter harness because the MAP sensor is gonna to go to the other side versus the original manifold, so that's what this is for. Also from ICT Billet, also available on summitracing.com or Amazon. Um, basically, I've poured it out the snout here just so that it lines up nicely to this adapter. And the other thing, was in the bottom. I removed all of the fins that were here in order for this to be able to sit down over the fuel pump. And other than that, I haven't changed really much of this and this is ready to rock. This is ready to go do what I needed to do. So once I have my intake and I figure out exactly what the tuner is gonna want in order to get everything going and set up, then I'll get this going. Um, I pretty much plan to show up to the tuner with my car stock, run a baseline dyno, right? Then slap this on, run a dyno, tune for this stuff, right? Just the intake manifold and throttle body. Once that's done, then I intend to, you know, put some E85 in the tank and have them tune for that. And once that's all said and done, then the car's where I want it to be. If you guys have enjoyed this video, you want to see more like it, I definitely have some more stuff coming up. Like I said, I'll show you the entire process of getting this on and tuned. Feel free to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is up. If you have any feedback, feel free to leave that in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys for watching.